In this Learning Byte for Windows Small Business Server 2011 Essentials, we'll take a look at managing and adding user accounts. So here in the dashboard, we can see in the common tasks, there's a quick link to add a new user account. You can also manage your users, of course, using the Users tab uh, here at the top of the dashboard. Now from here, we can see all of the users in the SBS environment, as well as their login name, whether or not they're allowed to access uh, remote web access to work remotely, also their level of access, whether they're a standard user or an administrative user, and whether or not their account is active. As we select an individual account, we have a number of tasks available, including viewing the account properties, deactivating an account, which can be used to temporarily disable account, uh, say if somebody goes on a leave of absence and you just want to make sure that that account uh, doesn't get used, protect it from being compromised, uh, anything like that. You can also remove an account entirely if somebody uh, has left the organization and, uh, and you want to simply remove the account. And of course you can change a user's password. You can also add a new user account. Let's go ahead and uh, walk through the steps of creating a new user account. This process is greatly simplified over what you would see in the traditional server environment. We're going to go ahead and continue our naming convention with first name, last initial, and then go ahead and give our new user a password. The next step is to decide on the level of access for the user, whether they'll be a standard user or an administrator. So let's go ahead and stick with the standard user for Kevin here. And on the next page, we can determine what shared folder access this new user is going to have for the different folders in the environment. So whether they have read-only, read-write, or no access to the shared folders. So we'll give Kevin read-write access to the company and marketing uh, shared folders, but only read access to the sales folder. Now the final page of the wizard is used to select our remote web access options. So we can choose to allow remote web access entirely or to not allow access. And then for each uh, component inside of RWA, we can choose whether or not that should be uh, enabled or disabled, including access to the server dashboard, which administrators can use to do maintenance of the server from remote locations. So we'll go ahead and leave the default choices and go ahead and click Create. So pretty straightforward to go ahead and create a new user account. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the properties of an existing user account. So we'll go ahead and look at Jeff Phillips here, viewing uh, his account properties. And again, we can see the first name and last name of the user. We can view or change the level of access, converting a standard user to an administrator or vice versa as desired. We can also change the user account password, or again here we can check or clear this box to set the account as active or inactive. We can also select the option to allow the user to view network-wide health alerts. So by default, a user would see health alerts that pertain to their own computer, but by selecting this box, they can see network-wide health alerts. On the Shared Folders tab, we can see again the shared folder access that each user has. The Web Access tab gives us again those options for enabling or disabling access to remote web access and its individual components. And finally, on the Computer Access tab, we can decide which computers in the environment the user has access to. We're going to go ahead and allow him to remotely access his computer over the internet. The final task for managing user accounts that I wanted to show you is the setting the password policy. So by default, the password policy is set to strong, which means that passwords must contain at least seven characters, include letters, numbers, and symbols. So this is the most restrictive, but you can go ahead and choose to set that to a lower level of complexity if that's appropriate in your environment. Of course, the recommendation is to leave it at strong if that's possible. Also, passwords do expire on a regular basis, and you can select to change that so that passwords never expire, again, if that's going to be appropriate in your environment. So that's a quick look at managing users and adding new users in the SBS environment. Thank you for watching this Learning Byte video, and I hope you'll join us for future videos.